Travelling over longer distances was usually in battered minibuses, hired through the hotels or often by simply street negotiation. And in the minibuses, the roads and the drivers were a succession of hazards. Refreshment breaks were at roadside stalls where one could purchase cheap fruit, packet snacks and coconuts to drink. Chris was happy to scrape out the coconut meat, but Josh preferred the local creaming soda drinks. Everyone was surprised that the local corn boiled on the side of the road. It was starchy rather than sweet. The most popular form of transport with Kai and Josh was the tuk-tuk, a motorised trishore, and riding in one of these, especially in the city, was its own form of entertainment. The party caught the train from Colombo to Candy, and braving the Fort Station crowds was particularly daunting. But after that, the air-conditioned first-class seats at $5 each were a welcome sight. Locals used the railway tracks for walking. They were level and a good deal safer than the road edges. Visitors to the Elephant Orphanage could go awfully close to the elephants there, which were mainly unrestricted. The youngest elephants were quite cute and fed by bottle, but the treatment made Chris and Judy uncomfortable sometimes. After feeding time, the elephants were taken for a walk to the river to bathe and again they came awfully close to the visitors on the street. After their bath, they walked back up the same narrow streets. There was abundant wildlife in Sri Lanka. Several species of monkeys were unrestrained in parks and streets.
Different squirrel-like animals scampered on grass and up trees. Reptiles included water monitors. Does look very goanna like, doesn't it? Well, goannas are part of the monitor lizard family. A tortoise wandered across the lawns at one of the hotels. The most impressive wildlife, however, was in the Uda Walawe National Park, which we visited with a safari vehicle. The initial excitement over spotting wild peacocks was nearly forgotten as buffalo passed on their way to a waterhole. Yeah, what do you want? Vehicles definitely gave way to elephants crossing the road. An elephant who came out of the water indulged in a dust bath within a few metres of the car. One to his left, one to his right, one over the top, and on his way. A brilliant kingfisher held their attention. Oh, can you see the bird with the fish? Yeah. Oh, I can see the fish very clearly. By the way, a croc I don't think a bird will be so much in danger with a crocodile. Unless he sneaks up on them. Not. A dance performance at the local Red Cross Hall in Candy was enthusiastic rather than polished. While balancing spinning plates and indulging in fire walking might not really represent traditional Sri Lankan culture. There are places of worship to visit. Buddhist. Christian. And Hindu. And in the cultural triangle, there were ruins that were both extensive and occasionally extremely impressive. The stupa was huge. And one such colossal restored stupa was now an active place of worship again. A huge rock had once been topped by a castle. Therefore, of course, everyone had to climb it. Even though part of the route was clinging to the side of a cliff. At least, that was better than the old way of climbing. There were impressive wall paintings, part of the way to the top. And on the top itself, there were some incredibly extensive views. The work of restoration continued the hard way. People were passing sacks of cement up scaffolding up the cliff to a human chain which passed it to the work site. A small tea factory visited early in the trip was absolutely spotless. The machinery was well maintained and still working, even if a little dated. A complimentary cup of tea wasn't universally welcome. The later stop saw much more extensive plantations. Slowly panning to rest. It's difficult to see far into the distance. A refreshing cup of tea at Lipton's seat was followed by a seven kilometre hike through stereotypical tea country. It was almost a historical document. The walk included a glimpse of the plantation workers' accommodation 
and a tour of a tea factory where the hygiene and material handling was decidedly questionable. Judy set out to book a range of accommodation styles to complement the holiday. We started with a locally run place, very basic, and a disappointingly untidy beach, but a well patronised pool. This was followed by an early 20th century plantation mansion. Still equipped with its original furniture, with huge tall ceilings and excellent meal service. A modern spa was very comfortable, with modern open dining and a lap pool overlooking the rice fields. The safari camp near a national park had well equipped rooms, even if the top floor was missing and the kitchen a slow 100 metres from the dining room. A hotel planned as an overnight stop on an inconvenient travel day offered walks on a fishing beach and a chance to explore its rock pools. The accommodation included a comfortable resort with a multi-level suite which held the whole party, a good dining room, and a pool bordered by huge rocks over which waves broke. It offered the chance for vigorous play. And a small artificial beach with shade for relaxed reading. The party was tempted by nearby beach dining for an evening cocktail, chefs willing to display their skills, and fresh seafood meals. These are the local prawns, by the way, not lobsters. The final night's accommodation was handy to the Gallface Hotel, where the party took cocktails while watching the sunset over the Indian Ocean. Ian and Jessica were kind enough to surrender their airline lounge privileges and comforts to Chris and Judy, although the comfort was somewhat lost on a totally exhausted Josh. After a flight from Colombo to Singapore, Ian and Jessica continued straight on to Queensland to take Kai and Josh back to school, while Chris and Judy lingered in Singapore to enjoy a stopover package. This included a ride on a huge ferris wheel similar to the London Eye. There's also a hop on hop off tourist bus which had a stop in Chinatown. A full day was spent on Sentosa Island, much developed since Chris and Judy's previous visit. They arrived via the cable car. They spent some hours at Universal Studios, something totally new to them on Sentosa. Judy excelled herself with a ride at Jurassic Park. She also tackled two roller coasters, one on the outside that was relatively tame. and an even more demanding one in the dark as part of the mummy's revenge. Chris and Judy popped helmets on for a ride on the luge and they took a chairlift back to the beginning. Although of their Singapore stopover included the Singapore Botanic Gardens. The superb orchid garden was a great way to finish their Singapore stopover. 